Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We're on tour. We're in Dusseldorf in Germany and we're at the SDN and OpenFlow World Congress. My name is Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Stephen Wright, Dr. Stephen Wright, who is the chairman, the newish chairman, of the Etsy NFV ISG. Stephen, good to see you. Last time we talked we were in a computer museum in Silicon Valley. Now we're in industrial Germany. You've been in the job as the chair of Etsy's NFV ISG for a few months now. What do you make of it now you've got your feet under the table? Well, there's certainly uh, lots going on to keep me busy and uh, there's, there's a lot of things happening in the industry at, at large. It's uh, really quite a busy time for everybody. So what is happening as far as the Etsy NFV ISG is concerned? It was going to be a sort of short term, a sort of two, three year gig. That has been extended from that by another couple of years. Right. So when it was originally envisaged, it was a, a two-year, uh, short, limited lifetime organization. Um, as we approached the end of that two-year limit, we realized that this is a bigger job than we uh, first anticipated. <laughs> um, it is, after all, the transformation of the whole industry in, 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 from a certain perspective. So yeah. um, getting that done in two years is, uh, is, is quite a challenge. And so we have uh, requested an extension for an additional two years to help um, to continue the work to uh, uh, both uh, continue the specification work inside the ISG, but also to help um, help develop that that ecosystem around NFV uh, elsewhere outside of the ISG in in the industry. So as far as the industry is concerned, a lot of uh, what's been going on is predicated very much on cooperation rather than competition. Things have changed to a great extent. How is that cooperation going? Are companies, vendors, telcos happy to work together on developing something that's going to all affect them all profoundly? I mean, it is, as you said earlier, changing the world as far as, as telecommunications is concerned. Yeah, I think that's been the, um, th that has actually been the real change that I would observe over the last two years of the ISG. When, when we uh, started in Sofia at our first meeting two years ago, um, it was really a challenge to get people to understand the concept of NFE and, and the scale and the implications of it. Mm. Um, I think two years on, th there's a much greater understanding of the scale of the transformation that's involved here. Um, but coming with that, there, there is the recognition that this change is, is, is happening. It's not, um, it's not something that uh, one person or one company can sort of uh, stand against the tide like King Canute. This, <laughs> <coughs> this um, uh, a trend of, of, of uh, virtualization, of cloudification, is, is, uh, has, has moved through other industries as well, and, and it uh, seems to be coming into uh, the telecom field. It is an enormous challenge. Do, you, do people find it daunting, or are they taking it on? I think it's, um, it's interesting. I think there, there, um, there are a number of ways to, uh, to look at, the, at this beast. <coughs> you can, um, <laughs> and, and, and I think it's, it's uh, sort of evolved a little over time. Every, uh, every meeting of the ISG, actually, I think I've learned something new about a new nuance about how, how it really affects um, our company and, and, and the industry. Y you have um, a, a transformation not just in the adoption of new technology or the new features, but also a, a business transformation where, where um, business models tend to change from, from capital expenditures to operations and, and, and expense type licensing arrangements. So there's, there's, there's all sorts of commercial uh, aspects to this as well as the, uh, uh, the new technologies around uh, virtualization and, and, and cloud management. Can we talk a little bit in a bit more detail about the business transformation side of things? It's a given now that SDN and NFV, you know, the technology is there, we understand the basis of it, there are, we're passing from the, the, the informative phase to the normative phase. People are beginning to understand completely how it works. It isn't beyond our reach to be able to do it properly. At the same time, as that technology is applied, business transformation sh must come with it if it's going to work properly. Um, but there seems to be resistance in many organizations against that kind of change. How are you going to drive that through? Uh, change is... Uh Change is always hard. Um, I think the uh, 
the, the thing to recognize, though, is um, there's, a, there's a nice uh, quote about uh, the, the future is uh, already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. <laughs> um, and I, th I think that really does apply here because the, the, a lot of the, the technologies we're talking about and indeed the business processes we're talking about are, uh, are things that people are doing today. They're just not typically doing it in our industry. Mm. Uh, and that's where um, we have the, uh, the opportunity to, to learn from others and, and leverage what's been going on in other industries and then take advantage of that in, in our space. Um, so it's, it's changing, uh, changing technologies is easy, changing processes is harder, changing people and skill sets is even harder. So <laughs> <still. It's> Absolutely. <laughs> what do you think, Stephen, um, as in terms of the industry's perception of NFV and SDN, but talking mainly about NFV here, and the expectations and perceptions that were there a couple of years ago uh, in Darmstadt and then through Bad Homburg this year and now in Dusseldorf na uh, today. Um, how have they changed over the past couple of years as reality has actually bitten? So I think there is um, th there's a tendency to be a little um, reductionist at times to, to think of what's the um, the sort of light motif or, or, or a snapshot that, that summarizes a particular technology. So you can think of uh, um, uh, reducing SDN down to, to separation of control and data points, yes. for instance. So you can yeah. th think of reducing NFE down to just using hypervisors or virtualization or something, something like this. But the reality is both of these concepts are, are much bigger than that. They, they have both evolved considerably from, the, from that point of view. Um, and so I think the, uh, there is a, a, an awareness in the industry that they are much bigger concepts or, or the implications are certainly much bigger than, than just separating control planes or, or just adding, uh, adding virtualization mm -hmm. and, and, and automation mechanisms. Um, and as those, those implications come out into the industry, then, then it, it, be it becomes easier to see how to, to make the piece parts work. As you start to get the, the automation, then you get the, the op OPEX improvements that you're looking for as an operator. Um, as you get the control plane separation, that gives you uh, opportunities for more immediate deployments in terms of, of supporting the performance requirements and also in terms of uh, uh, migration possibilities for existing equipment deployments. Okay. Um, what, in your opinion, do you think will be the key services or applications that telcos will be enabled to launch with the use of NFV? I think that's that's um, actually a very interesting question, and, and, and one I'm waiting to see the answer <laughs> for. Um, and, and, and I don't mean to, to be trite about that, but the the uh, and this is not a a, uh, a situation of build it and they will come, but mm. rather a situation where the there's not going to be I think one uh, killer app that will drive this but rather the ability to innovate new services much more rapidly and deploy new services much more rapidly is, a, um, is part of the transformation in the industry that I think we're all looking forward to see. Um, if you think about the, the sort of timescales for new services in the telecom industry over the 150 years roughly of the telecom industry, uh, certainly of companies like, like mine, it's, um, you know, we, we've had Plain old telephone service has been there mm. and is still there. Absolutely. Although there are people starting to talk about how to switch off the PSTN. Yep. Right? Uh, but there are a number of other new services that, are, that have come along over time. And as things move, whether it's towards um, uh, content delivery services, uh, more mobile services, other uh, apps, uh, more specialized applications in the Internet of Things, uh, there's a variety of types of services, but the specific one isn't so much the, the important thing as the ability to try a new one and see whether there is the market acceptance yeah. to really drive the investment and scaling of that particular service mm. or whether we should try a different one and, and go in that path. Outside of our studio here, <laughs> this big room, there is an entire section of the event dedicated to proofs of concept. Um, how important are those? Have you looked at them? Have you seen them? How important are they? I think they're, they're actually quite important. Um, e although they, I mean, the challenge from the, uh, the ISG side is um, when, we, when we started out two years ago, the, uh, 
you know, the, the S in ISG stands for specification, mm. and I think people thought we were going to be just doing specifications. So uh, we, we launched the POC program in October of 2013, which is you know, just a year ago. Yep. And in that year, we have now, I believe, 25 POCs that are uh, endorsed by the ISG. Um, and I'm not sure of the exact number here. I think it's like 14. That's 14, um, yeah. That are, that are uh, both in, in the hallway here and in the floor downstairs. Um, and that, that represents a, a, um, an enormous commitment from the community in terms of resources to make these things happen. Uh, but also it um, provides a, a refreshing perspective on the, on the problem at hand because it, it's very easy when you're writing a specification to focus on um, one aspect or, or the big picture, but when you have these uh, POC activities, you have a much more concrete set of folks trying to get something um, something working that shows the particular aspect that's important to them mm. that they want to bring to the community's attention. So whether that's the um, uh, you know the, the, the sort of uh, recursive design possibilities of one particular architecture or, or the uh, uh, importance of uh, resilience for, for the architecture in the face of denial of service attacks or, or the ability to migrate applications. Th these are all um, examples and th there's you know, 14 different examples out there that, that, that uh, highlight particular aspects that, that people felt w it was important to, to uh, bring to the community's attention. I think that's a, that's a great step forward because these are real concrete uh, they examples. Are, indeed. Can we round off the interview? I'd like to ask you a couple more sort of techie questions, if I might. Um, we've been talking primarily about NFV, but as we've already said, you know, SDN runs parallel to it, not quite meeting at infinity. But um, what um, do the? Let me put it like this. Okay. Whatever happens in other parts in other parts of Telco's business, arguably access will still remain the most important part. How do you envisage the access network will evolve by exploiting both NFV and SDN? Access is uh, a large part of the, uh, the operator's infrastructure. It's, it's um, uh, oftentimes easier to get um, uh, caught up in, in uh, more centralized functions that are, are more complex and perhaps more uh, interesting from that perspective, but there is a lot of access infrastructure, uh, whether that's wireless or wireline mm. access. There's a lot of cell towers, there's a lot of uh, fiber and copper in the ground, uh, and a lot of outside plants supporting all of that. Um, and, and both SDN and NFE do have roles to play in the access. I think a lot of, well, in, in the uh, ISG we have a, a use case document that uh, we published uh, last year that describes a number of fields of application for NFV. Uh, and that covers um, not just the, the mobile infrastructure that um, a number of folks have focused on, but also the wireline infrastructure and, and, and virtualized CPE type applications. Um, th they uh, may not have gotten the, uh, the emphasis of, of the wire wireless side of things, um, but there are uh, important aspects wh where you can have converged infrastructure supporting both wireless and wireline services, for example, um, as, as well as uh, the, the virtualized CPE cases, which are um, themselves interesting and a, a perhaps a different um, scale and perspective compared to the, the, the more traditional infrastructure approaches. Finally, there, our industry is full of acronyms, initials, strange sounding words that are made up and forced together in unnatural ways sometimes. Um, and this is a very much the case at the moment with SDN and NFV. There's a real cauldron of alphabet soup bubbling away out there. And a lot of it is preceded by a little lowercase v and then a string of letters. And I'd like to ask you about one of them because I don't know what many of these things are, and I'm supposed to, <laughs> and we're doing this. But one I'd like to ask you about specifically, if you wouldn't mind, one we hear bandied about a lot is carrier-grade network access translation. Can you tell us why that's important and what it means, what's it important for? So, um, so network address translation is a, um, 
a, a typical middle box function. Uh, it's commonly applied in both the wireline and wireless infrastructures. Uh, and it's something that um, scales on a per subscriber type basis. So it's um, a, a definitely a network function that's needed. Um, and, it, and it has scaling issues as the, the network grows. Right. So uh, this is a, a prime candidate for virtualization. Uh, so there are, so that's the little V in front of the the implementation here. Um, and, and as folks look at uh, virtualization, there there are um, a variety of opportunities inside the network operators network. Some of them are. Um, perhaps easier to scale, easier to separate from, from the underlying hardware, and other, others may be um, uh, more difficult to separate, but, but may have greater value in doing so. So, um, uh, uh, well, different folks may, may consider where, where they want to see carrier grade net applying in that, but um, yeah. it's, it's, it's definitely one of the things that people are talking about as, as being a potential virtualized service. That's cleared that up. I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, Stephen Wright. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.